Hey guys, good morning. Good morning. It is Sunday the 27th. So yesterday we went, Linda and I, we went to uh, a place called JL Smokehouse. I hope I got the name right. I'm pretty sure that's the name. And um, I want to do a review. I want to do a review. So when I first saw it, I'm a Yelper. So I always see Yelp. And I'm going to start putting my Yelp link down. So if anybody wants to kind of try to follow me on Yelp, I think you can follow me on there. Um, and I usually review reviews. I'm behind on some of my reviews because I got like a business over here that shipped my stuff back to the company, that uh, the Ratchet company. I I need to do a review on him. He was great and I haven't done a Yelp review. So I'm going to be doing a Yelp review for him. But I want to do the review on JL Smokehouse. So I told you guys, as I go to different places here in the Arizona, I'm getting out a little bit more, but I may start pulling back a little bit um, due to the new variant or the, the variant that's becoming more prominent. And even though I have my um, vaccination, it doesn't prevent us from necessarily getting sick and you can get COVID. And so I don't know, I don't know if they have data yet to see what the new, how the new variant is responding in conjunction to those who are vaccinated. So we know that with the other COVIDs, when the vaccination came out, you could still get COVID, but you could actually end up still getting sick. Just what the uh, vaccine was supposed to do was keep you from being to where you're on a ventilator, hospitalized, and the real bad aspects of COVID. So you could still get, to my understanding from my research, COVID similar to flu-like symptoms, but your body would fight it better, okay? So this video is not about COVID. So you just may see me pulling back on going to places. Although I'm not really going out all that much because I'm still working towards getting a car which we're working towards 60 days from now. Let's mark 60 days from now. Um, but we went to JL Smokehouse. Yesterday, I celebrated the 53rd. And Linda's like, no, no, because I was just going to order. Because initially, it was supposed to be me, Joe, and Linda. But Joe couldn't go, which was okay, because I had some issues <laughs> with being around Joe. Because he had a nephew who's been sick um, about a week or so back. And he had to take him to the hospital. And a lot of the symptoms... Granted, they could be flu-like or viral, but what kind of virus are we dealing with? Are we dealing with COVID? And that nephew refuses to get the COVID vaccine. And so I was like, mm. and one of my friends who's a healthcare professional, she was like, you need to put Joe on a 28-day quarantine. So I kind of prayed about it and things happened where he couldn't go. And I was like, okay, that's that's the Lord. I'm going to listen to you, Lord. I'm going to listen to you. <laughs> and so that, that took place. Anyway, um, let's get into this video. Um... Oh, and NPR did a new article on the variant. So y'all just research it and then make your own decisions on how you handle stuff. Uh, here it goes. So JL Smokehouse, I'm going to tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly, okay? I'm going to start with the good, okay? The food was very, very, very good. Um, we had our favorites and we had our okays. So... Top favorite, what he stands as his signature uh, smoked barbecue is his pulled pork. And hands down, Linda and I do think this, the, the pulled pork was a winner. Um, my top favorite, though, when I did my tastings, and I unfortunately they ran out of when I when I got when I got to the Linda got Linda went before me, and then when I got up there, they had run out of things. They were out of the sausage links. Uh, they had the hot, they had the, uh, what do you call it? The hot links. They were out of the rib tips, which I wanted. They were out of that. Um, so there were things that they were out of collard greens. And I'm a huge collard green fan. I make a mean collard green myself. So I was huge on collard greens. I really had a taste to want to taste their collard greens, but they were out of it. So what I ended up getting, and I'll tell you on my plate, what I thought were the tops and what I taste tested from Linda. So I actually, she let me try the rib tips. And right, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, love the rib tips. To me, top of the chart with the rib tips. I am not a pork rib fan. I don't, I've never been really a pork rib fan. I'm a beef rib fan. Beef rib don't normally have as much meat, but I like beef opposed to pork. Um, And I'm a beef rib fan, but when it comes to pork tips, I like the pork tips, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I like the tips. I like rib tips and it can be pork. I don't care. Flavor was on point. 
uh, not too greasy. That was the other thing Linda mentioned why she's never been a rib tip fan is sometimes rib tips can be greasy. Uh, I mean, yeah, pork rib tips can be greasy. Pork, pulled pork can sometimes be greasy if not done right as well too. Um, and his pulled pork moist, very, very moist. His rib tips were good. Um, second favorite in there would have been the brisket. Now, his brisket was more of the leaner brisket portions. I like both sides of brisket. I like the lean portions of brisket as well as I like um, the more moist that has a little more fat in it. His were, what I noticed was his was more of the, of the lean. And it was tender though. So I, I can't, I mean, he, he cooked it right. Brisket has to be long and slow uh, for it to be a really tender cut. I had his ribs, and his ribs are the pork ribs. Now, what I didn't like about the ribs, I liked them. The flavor was, its flavor on all his meats were phenomenal. His smoke on all his meats, phenomenal. What I didn't like about his ribs was I didn't like the membrane left on the back. So, if you smoked, and I do smoke meats, um, I don't have the years that this man has, so I'm not even going to say that. And there's people I know who do. Um... I've visited other barbecue places here. There's one guy here, Little Miss. I've been there. His father gave me a tour of the, uh, when they first opened, a tour of the pit, of the pit area, okay? And um, Little Miss on hit. I don't know if I can't remember if I did Little Miss's ribs. And I don't know if they do this. But again, these guys are competition smokers type people. And JL, hands down. But what I've had is because I did drive all over the country, and I've been to barbecue places all over the country. I am a lover of good barbecue. And I'm a lover of good smoked barbecue. I ain't talking about just grilling some burgers on the grill. I'm talking about a person who has a skill to smoke foods. And I don't personally care whether you're using technology or whether you're using like most black folks, brown folks do. And to me, uh, what I call the, it's the difference between the grandma in the kitchen and the one that goes to school. So grandma can compete with the one that goes to school. She can get in there and just taste something and do it. JL is that grandma in the kitchen. He knows how to how to taste food and do it. He's got it. He's he's got it. Flavor on point. On point. But the ribs, where I had a problem was I don't like the membrane on the back. And some people who do ribs, who competition ribs, they actually go through and skew that off and pull it off. It's some work to do it. But it tends to make for, at least to me, a better eating experience. And I'm not fighting with the membrane. I don't, I don't like fighting with the rib and the membrane. I want to be able just to bite into and the meat come off. I did not have that experience with his ribs because I think it's more so that membrane was on there and the moisture to make the meat more moist and come off the bone was not there. But his ribs are good. So that's my only issue with the ribs. Um, let's see what else do we have. Hot link. I was okay on the hot link. I mean, it was okay. I, I... I, because some of the places you go around the country, they actually make their own sausages, and that is a whole nother experience. I can tell he gets his sausage probably from somewhere he doesn't make those. I don't know about the smoked sausage. I'm probably thinking he buys those too. Um, it, it were okay. The flavor was there. If you want smoked hot link, it was okay. Hot links to me have not been, even Joe and I talked about buying hot links in the store. They're not like what we grew up with as a kid. When we had hot links, they were hot. And they were actually hot links. Now, I don't know. I, I, they don't taste the same. I don't know if it's because they're putting all the feed filler in there and processing and whatever. I I don't even buy hot links anymore. I just, I had a craving for them at one point and I, I may have a few still up in my freezer. I am just totally turned off from what we are calling hot links nowadays. They just don't taste the same. Because Joe said, he said, Shannon, he said, you, know, you said, you grew up with hot links? I said, yeah. He says, have you bought some lately? He said, they don't. I, I said, yeah, I think they're processing too much. So me and hot links, I'm pretty much done with them. Um, even like smoked sausages is not the same to me. It's like, unless I can find, we have a place here in Arizona uh, called Shriners. They actually make their own sausages. I need to get by there. Um, they actually have some phenomenal sausages. And there was a place I went to, a little German place. When I got back, I had to go to a doctor's appointment in Scottsdale and they had a lamb sausage. And you could tell it was specialty made. I don't know where they got it from. I would like to order them. Phenomenal. If I have sausage, I want I want a good, fresh made sausage. A lot of the store-bought stuff is so processed now. It's just like, eh, it doesn't even have flavor. Or its flavor is, is muted. Or it just doesn't, it, even the meat is weird. So, 
If that's the case, I might as well go vegan meat. And, and I, there's some vegan sausages I've had that are much better. But anyway, neither here nor there. So smoke, his smoked meats were good. Our, my top favorites would be the rib tips, the pulled pork, and then the brisket. And for pulled pork to be brisket for me, and I'm a massive brisket lover, that says a lot. So rib tips, um, pulled pork, and then brisket. The ribs were okay. They were, I mean, their flavor was good. I just, like I said, the membrane thing is what got me. Um, I'm, I'll miss his, next time we'll miss the, uh, what's that? We'll miss the, uh, sausage, the, the hot link, the hot link. It was okay. It wasn't, it wasn't my top favorite, but like I said, it doesn't even matter if it's his. I think it's just, in general, hot links aren't what they used to be to me. Getting into the condiments, the side things. Now, oh, Linda. So Linda's choices were different from mine. Hers, hands down, was the pulled pork first. Hold on, was it the brisket or the pulled pork? The pulled pork and then the brisket. She loved the pulled pork and then the brisket. Those two were her winners on the plate. Um, was the pulled pork and the brisket. She also liked theirs. So let's get into the sides. And I'm going to stay with so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay. Since I'm on Linda, I'll deal with Linda. I know she liked their cabbage, but Linda's a cabbage fan. So she loved their cabbage. But we both will say, and I and I, I believe we'll agree with this. I didn't get, I forgot to get, I was struggling with getting their barbecue beans. And I could kick myself. His barbecue beans are, that's, that's the star of the show. The barbecue beans, whoo, on hit. His barbecue beans on hit. Um, So I would say for Linda would be the barbecue beans, the cabbage, and then we both like the potato salad. So the potato salad, they don't make there. I asked at the counter. They don't make the potato salad, but what he does is he do like most of us do, because we grew up with, if you bought store bought potato salad, ain't like how we grew up as black folk, as African-American folks. When when mama, grandma make potato salad, they put their toenails in there, you know, put their foot in it. It ain't like that. So he obviously doesn't have the time to do that or just, just not his signature dish. But what he does is he doctors the potato salad he buys. And I already, I have a feeling because I have taste good taste buds. I know what he did to doctor it and I'm going to actually use the method because his potato salad, whatever, what he did to it, he took it to the next level. He took the store bought potato salad and he took it to another level and it was good. So I could taste what I think what he put in there. I'm not going to tell y'all because that's his signature thing, but I kind of me and Linda sitting at the table, and she said, girl, he put something in his potato salad. I said, I asked at the counter, did they make it? And they don't make it, but he doctors it. And I said, and I sat there, and I started eating them. And I pulled one ingredient right off. I was like, okay, we know this ingredient. A, because it's also visible. It's a very visible ingredient. So I was like, okay, this is that ingredient, and you could taste it. And we knew it was a certain, it was a smoked ingredient. I was like, okay, he put that in there. But there was something else. I said, there's something else in here. There's something, there's another seasoning he's using to take this to the next level. And as I kept on, I'm like, oh, and I said, taste it again. And when I said it, Linda said, that is it. I was like, yeah. So we figured out what that other ingredient was. And we think we got it. I think it's mainly two ingredients he puts in there to take the potato salad to the next level. And his potato salad was very good. So the bake, the barbecue beans, um, the potato salad was good. She liked, and the cabbage, those were her, her favorites. Now, they had mac and cheese. We weren't really big fans on the mac and cheese. Like, the mac and cheese, it, they added more cheese to it. It could just be you regular take mac and cheese and melt some cheese in there, take some cheese and stir it up. It, it wasn't anything spectacular. I mean, it's okay. I, I'm okay. I It won't be what I get again. Uh, baked beans, yes. Now, I ordered something different, and Linda got to try mine. And she didn't order it because she didn't see it. They had barbecue spaghetti. My my tops on the sides. The beans, the barbecue spaghetti, and the potato salad. Winners. I'm really and, and the cabbage was good, but that because I didn't have a I'd get it again. The cabbage was good. Don't hands down, that was good. I'd get it again, but it wasn't I wanted the the collards. I wanted their collard greens and they were out. And we got there, and we're gonna talk about that because this is where we're gonna get into the bad part. Um we got there very early. So well, we didn't get there when they opened. They opened at eleven. Linda came and got me about 12.30, and we rode over. I'm going to get into the bad. <laughs> I'm going to get into the bad. 
So when we got there, they have a very small parking lot, number one. And let me kind of tell you guys how I came to this place. I saw it on Yelp, okay? Saw it on Yelp. The night before, we had made a plan later in that night because I wasn't really going to do anything but chill here at the house. And uh, Linda's like, well, we should go there for your, for your birthday. And I'm like, eh, I was just going to chill. But I really wanted to taste this barbecue based on the Yelp reviews. Joe said, I can't go. Um, later on, he canceled because I can't go, which actually, like I said, it worked out because I was concerned about um, his possible exposure with his nephew to the variant. And we don't know what the nephew, because he's saying he don't know whether the hospital, which is really bizarre to me, did a COVID test on his nephew or not, which is really bizarre to me. Because to me, that would be number one thing. Have you been vaccinated? No. Okay, we need to do a COVID test because you're showing COVID-like symptoms. Any, any of the, right now, certain viral symptoms align themselves with COVID. I don't know what kind of hospital he went. I don't know. I have no idea. Linda and I got there and the parking lot was madness. There's one, there was no lines down to show people where to park. So people were doing just half butt parking. You already got an extremely small uh, parking lot. So you need to put lines down in the back and get that to where, um, to get and get that to where you actually show decent parking. Okay, that's number one. Number one. Number two. <laughs> number two. Uh, they have no automation. So they were when we when we got in there, the line was the door. When we got in, we walked. We were able to get in the door and stand right to next to the trash can at the door. And we stood there for 20 minutes of one man just standing at the order counter. There was one woman working the order counter. And she's working not only the orders, but the pickup orders. Bad organization. So you're, I would say we stood in line an hour. In line one hour. Horrible organization. And even... Even though I know that some of their busyness that particular day was due to a particular YouTuber's review, your organization was still bad regardless because I could tell this is how you normally do business, okay? Very nice people, very nice people, but I'm giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly, okay? Just the bad and ugly. As far as when you went up to the counter, they were very pleasant, but their organization was horrible. And they have no automation. Now, it says you can order online, but there was one girl we stood in line with, and she said she tried to call, and they don't take any phone orders. Baby, you turning away business. Horrible, horrible, horrible. So we get you, We got to work on your organization. We got to work on your business skills. You need some help, okay? I don't know what you need to do, but you need some help. And the other issue is you just had a massive YouTuber who has over close to 8 million followers come and review your business and just brought you a ton of business and put you on the map. So you're going to have to change your game and you got to get organization. If you don't know how to do it, you need to hire somebody to come in, analyze you and get that set up. You need automation. Automation is 2021. You should not be handwriting and scribbling at the counter. <laughs> folks order that takes too long you should punch buttons and it should be not hard you can get automated systems that are made for your business and you punch this that and the other thing and do the order in you know granted we do things from love at the pit but in business we got to learn from the pink people i'm just saying and do it they they they, they have a methodology or other african americans who are doing it right we got to change it up we got to change it up mr jl i'm just saying to you so, I, the, the, the organization was bad. The girl was trying to work both. The man was standing for 20 minutes. She's working on getting outbound orders going, and he's just standing there. So, he's standing for 20 minutes. Now, there could be a twofold methodology to what I felt they were doing this for. One, because they didn't know how much of the meat they were automatically going to run out of. That's another issue. Um, you should be able to analyze <laughs> what you have and know what you're out of before you get run out of it totally. That's 
another problem that's that that they didn't they didn't have solved um that should be a little bit more smooth as far as that and know ahead of time they would uh, they called me to the counter well the first part was we don't have the rib tips at the counter then after I after the, after we did that, when it gets me, we don't have any more smoked sausage. We can put another meat on there. What would you like? We'll put, put put another meat on there for you. Well, by doing that, you automatically shorten what's going to go to somebody in line. But you got to make it right. So you either make it right by crediting the person on their on their on their bill, or you make it right by doing another meat. So that's it. He's going to have to expand his pit. That's another thing. He's got to expand that pit, especially if his business keeps going like it was. He's got to see whether or not he's going to sustain the popularity he got from that review from the YouTuber. Now, the YouTuber who reviewed him was a guy named Mark Weens. I Weens, I can't. Remember. And I think Mark is he's Asian in some sense. I don't know if he's Thai, from Thailand. I don't know. He's he's got he's Asian. He's got some kind of Asian background. I've been following Mark for over three plus years. And he travels all over the world. I did not know he was here in my home state of Arizona. It just happened to be I was just doing like going on to YouTube and doing some updates on news and stuff. And he was in my feed. And I'm like, oh, that's the smokehouse we're going to. I opened it up and I'm like, oh, he, he's here. He's here in Arizona. I didn't even know he was back here in the States. He'd been overseas in different countries tasting food. But he's here in Arizona right now. And this guy, if y'all guys have never seen him, it's M-A-R-K. And last name is W-I-E-N-S, I believe. Great little channel. He's got close to 7.7 .7 some odd million followers. He travels all over the world. I used to just like watching him go do street food in different Asian countries. Because the Asian street food is intriguing. And then when he would do seafood, he had them big old... I'd love watching them. So he went and reviewed this guy's restaurant. So let me tell you why it was busy. He reviewed the guy's restaurant just a few days ago. And prior to us going. And when we were in there, people, you know, you know, folks talk to folks. So we was in there and our people talked to me. So one of the ladies, a black couple that was there, she started talking to us and she said we had tried, she tried to call an order in and they wouldn't take call in orders. And I said, well, on the wall, it says they take online orders. Now, how they take online orders, I have no idea because you have no automation because at the front counter, you writing down orders on paper. This is, you're not the waitress walking around to tables. <laughs> And even now, when when you go to certain restaurants, even the waiters and waitresses have tablets and they're punching in your order. It's a smoother transaction. Use technology. Writing on paper is a backup. I don't I have a problem with having it as a backup in case something goes down with technology. But you should be able to punch it in and make things smoother. Okay. That line should not have been an hour long. You should have had all them orders done. And then you could either call those people up and let them pay as the, as you're putting the order in. That also would be a way for you to say, hello, number 24, we need you to come up. We're getting ready to process your order. Those orders do like um, Dutch Brothers. Or, you know, Dutch Brothers, they walk down the line, and if they start seeing their cars back up, they have, person, they have two people. They have one person who's talking to the person at the order counter, and the other person comes out and is taking those orders in that line. And they're on their cell phone punching in the orders. Technology. Okay. Get that line down. Get that line down. Because making people wait will automatically start turning people away. Okay. Some people will wait. Some people are going to go. And that money just walked out your door. It's all about the coin. It's about the coin. Okay. So one lady she they were from chicago they just moved here to arizona she found out about this barbecue place from mark wines or wings or however you said wings video and they live in gilbert so let me explain to you what gilbert is from where we are we were in the hood in phoenix this is where this place is at these people probably drove close to 45 minutes to an hour to get to this barbecue joint and they had over an hour wait in the line not good okay um there was a lady who was a regular and she said she said what she said i'm trying to figure out what's going on so she didn't know about the youtube video and we were all sitting at a table waiting after we had ordered and then i put my phone up i said this is what's going on and i showed mark wayne's video she goes 
Oh, she said, because, girl, there are people in here. Because Asian folks was in there. White folks was in there. And I say them because white folks will find some barbecue, too. They like us. They will find some barbecue. But the Asian folks was in the house. Because Mark comes from, he has an Asian background. They was in there. She said, I ain't never seen even these many Asian folks in here. And I said, he's Asian and he travels all over the world. She said, I never heard of him. I said, get into him because his videos are phenomenal. He takes you all over the world eating food. And so, like right now, I think he's been in Tucson right now at, at uh, three different locations in Tucson. Matter of fact, he got some locations I ain't never been to in Tucson. And uh, I, I, I want to go. That's I said, as soon as I get the car, that's, a, that's what Linda said. She said, road trip? I said, road the hell trip. <laughs> we going. So, he got some places. I'm going to try here in my backyard, Arizona. Now, I know some places, but he, 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 he don't went some places in my backyard, Arizona. So, I'm going to tell you, um, definitely, you want, you know, you, you need to change your, your, your thing up. You know, I, I hope that this lasts for him, but... Like I said, that experience was not good. Um, you do need to get a phone order system. Now, what kills me is he says no automation, but DoorDash and Grubhub pick up from him. So I have no idea how they're doing that because if there's no automation, you're, you're doing online orders. So how are you doing the online orders and you don't have automation at the front counter? So those were some of the things I saw. Uh, the bad part was his, his working of the front counter as far as taking in orders. Our waiting line is ridiculous. Um, I do know there's places in Texas that are like that. Um, and, and But it's, to me, it's just and some people will wait that long. And then you get up there, you get there, and oh, we, we're out of this, that, and the other thing. So if you do go to him right now, especially under the early part of, this, of his popularity, get there first thing in the morning. The uh, On Yelp, it did give a wrong time. It said he didn't open until 1130. He opens at 11. Um, but get there first thing in the morning because if you wait, it's going to be a long but wait. <laughs> we we waited an hour. And like I said, the food was good. Hands down, the food was good. There were certain things I was like, mm, but the food was good. Mac and cheese, mm, I'm okay. I mean, it, was, it wasn't bad. It just, it just didn't have anything that made me jump off the table. It was something I could do here in the house um, and just add some more cheese to a mac and cheese box. That's kind of what I felt I was doing, was getting. Um... His potato salad, even though he doesn't make it, what he does to doctor it, phenomenal. Um, what else? What else? What else? The beans star of the show on the on the sides and the and the barbecue spaghetti. Those two are the star of the show. Um, liked his brisket. Brisket very good. He does more of the lean based brisket part of the brisket, which was good. Pulled pork, hands down, he is right. His pulled pork is, is phenomenal. Rib tips, flavor on, t on tilt. His ribs flavor is good. I just don't like the membrane being on there. And I like the ribs, uh, the, the meat to come off the bone a little bit better, but I think that's because the membrane is still on there. Um, sausages, um, I'm cool. At least the hot link, I didn't get to get the, the regular sausage. I may try it just to try it next time I order from them, and I will go back. Um, or I'll have it delivered. I'm probably going to have it delivered. Um, sausage also the other thing is make sure you check your food so like when she went to deliver my food that's another bad she I, my, I ordered they have like they call it the they have different ones so my mine was a $40 thing and it came with a big tin of barbecue which you'll see here um, it came with six meats of your choice was it six meats and five sides or four sides it's either four or five sides I can't remember so six meats and I think four sides, I think. So, and it was called, I think they called the slugger and they have different names for each one. So I got the six meats slugger. That one came with, oh, sweet mother of Jesus. Um, you get to choose six meats. Now, if you choose double a meat, you have to pay extra $2.49 for doubling up your meat. And I was okay with that. So I paid that. Um, but that came with, Trying to think, y'all. <sighs> Forgive me. The six meats came with the four sides. Well, one of them was supposed to be potato salad. Well, when she came, she put the three sides and she forgot the potato salad. So that's another reason why your automated system needs to be better. Because the automated system will list. And then what'll happen is you'll have you'll have the list of what that person is supposed to get. 
when they put that together, it's just a checklist. Whereas handwriting and a lot of human element gets into human error. And not saying it can't happen with automated, but it's less likely if your system is set up well. And then you just need to teach your people a check and point basis. I did like the fact that when you came to the counter, they opened up the thing to show you you got what you got. And that nothing that what you ordered was in there. So they open up. This is what you ordered. Boom, boom, boom. When she did that and she started putting everything there, she then said, and I, and I said, wait a minute, didn't I order potato salad? Oh, you did. And then that's when she, she, she went and had to go get the potato salad. Again, had we had a more automated system, she would have had a checklist. And then the other thing they were doing, which I didn't like, and you guys, this is just customer service and I've done it for years. Never just give people a bunch of packages and don't offer them a bag. Okay, here, here you go. I understand bags cost, but I just paid you 40 some dollars worth of food. And you're putting them into go tins. You need to give me a bag with that, okay? Also, the reason you wanna give me a bag is because of how you're set up, you don't need me keep coming back to that counter. You already got a line backed up and you got other people you're servicing. It's not a huge counter. You need me to have my stuff go and not have to come back. It's called final resolution. Resolve it right there. Think ahead of what your customer needs. So that to me was a bag should have been included. I had to ask for the bag, but they were giving people and people take these little containers and hold them. I'm like, oh my God, no, no, no. You need to say, would you like a bag with that? Or here's a bag, really here's a bag. It's just too many containers broken up for this person. It's not like they're just carrying the tray out. You had to look, I got what's it gonna be? Cause I ate, ate part of it. This right here, they had a bunch of these, the little containers. With sides, you you, you, you you can't. You can't give a person and, and you need to give them a bag with that, okay, automatically. And also because barbecue's heavy, most people are, were not gonna finish that, that, that barbecue right there. They were gonna take it to go. They were gonna eat maybe at some of the tables and then whatever was left over, I don't need you coming back up here to the counter. And I don't need you coming back up to the counter <laughs> and asking for nothing. The other thing was also offer sides of the barbecue sauce. It doesn't have to be big, but offer sides of the barbecue sauce. We, again, had to go back to the counter and ask for sides of barbecue sauce. Um, and barbecue sauce. I didn't talk about that because I am a sauce person. Y'all know I'm working on barbecue sauce. So I am a sauce person. His sauce is good. It's 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 a little more of a liquidy sauce. I like thicker barbecue sauces, but it was good. It's got good flavor. Um, it's more of a vinegar-based sauce. And I think if I remember in his wings video, he says his style comes more from Memphis. So I can sense the Memphis style. I sensed a little bit of a little bit of Texas because Texas has a little bit more of a vinegaring, but I do sense the Memphis style barbecue. Um, it was a little more of a wet sauce, a little bit more of a, of a, of a, of a, a liquid based sauce. What I, I'm not a huge, I do like sweet, but I don't like, like, Kansas City sauces to me are more sweet. They're more, I think they're more, um, oh, what's the word? They're more of a syrup based. Um, they may use more of a, like a molasses or a syrup. I can't remember. I know I've researched the Kansas sauce. It's, it's, it's sweeter. It's more syrupy. Um, I'm not a, I, I like some of their sauces, but it's a sweet sauce. I'm a, my favorite barbecue sauce, hands down, will always be Texas. I like, Texas has more of a, which he did have, they have that vinegar, they have that, um, that spice. Um, most Texas barbecue sauces are thicker. Uh, and I like, and they have that tang. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, and I like tangy. So I like their tangy. Some people like really sweet barbecue sauces. I'm not a sweet barbecue. And Texas barbecue sauces also usually have a little bit of a heat. And I'm talking about a hot heat, a spice to it that's hot. So that's one of my favorites. His sauce was good though. It had a more vinegar base. It, um, a light sweetness to it, a little bit of tang because of the vinegar. So I did enjoy his sauce. I'm going to say I did enjoy it. It wasn't, his sauce wasn't overpowering. That's what I will say. So if you want something, I liked his sauce because it was not overpowering. But then I am a sauce person, so I do like some sauces to have some ump. You could eat his barbecue without a sauce. And so when you want a true person who's a good smoker, when you can say, I could eat this barbecue with no sauce, that's a good barbecue. So he's got a good smoke. You could eat it with no sauce. 
It's a good barbecue. Anyway, this is pretty long. I didn't mean for it to be this long, but it gave you a good breakdown of everything. Guys, I'm going to put at the end of this, our, our visit, some photos. I might put the photos to music. Y'all know how I do. And uh, give it a try. JL Smokehouse is in the hood off of... It's just up from 24th Street and Broadway. And I forgot what street it is. It's not too far. If you guys here in Arizona know Reverend Black's church, I know that church y'all coming up. Got ministers in my family, right? And I grew up in the Baptist church. Reverend Black's church right next door to the barbecue spot. Um, I believe he's going to have to move if he keeps his popularity based on the review that he got from Wines. And uh, he's at some other awards from New Times here in Arizona, which goes around to different restaurants and gives awards. Uh, it was Arizona Food, I think, also is a good magazine. And they also um, had, he has a, 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 an award from them as well. Hidden Gym, great barbecue. I will be ordering again. Um, like I said, we just need to work on our ordering system and you're probably going to need to get a little bit more help. But I believe even with what he had going on, he could have had a much smoother um, he just needs somebody to come in there and analyze how they're working the kitchen. And then he needs to analyze how much food to have on site based on his numbers. And he's going to have to look at every week. And I understand why, because you don't want to waste food either. So, but other than that, your barbecue smoke on hit, you're going to have to expand your pit. And I really enjoyed it, Mr. J.L. And the funny thing, his name is James Lewis. My, I have an uncle, James Lewis, as well. He's not my uncle. We're not related. But I was kind of laughed because my, because my uncle's name is James Lewis. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go check this out. There's too much coincidental stuff going on. And the big boy is in there. And I'm going to share this with you. It was funny. We were talking about barbecue at my new company. And one of the girls said, oh, Shannon, have you been here? And I said, no, I haven't. And she said, we went when it was hottest, blah, blah, blah in there. And I was like, okay. And I said, and she's like, and I said, well, usually if you want to get good barbecue, you're going to go into a place that's not the coolest. I said, and I'm going to tell you how you usually can tell you got a good barbecue person. When you got that guy with that greasy, nasty shirt on, because he's been out there working the pit, that tells you you're dealing with a barbecue person. And when he's in Wyatt's video, he got that polo shirt and it got the grease all down it, smoky, sweaty. I was like, JL putting his foot up in that smoke. That's all I got to say. So I did enjoy it other than the weight. And we, even with the weight, we thoroughly enjoyed it. And we kind of just overlooked it because we knew you were hit getting the popularity. But we also saw that you got some areas that need to be worked on. But man, phenomenal food, very clean restaurant. Um, enjoyed it, came out of there smelling like smoke and getting ready to get up here and have some of your leftover barbecue that I brought home for breakfast, brunch. Peace. Y'all watch the rest of it at the end, two and two. Hey, y'all, I wanted to include something in this video about the barbecue place. I'm going to cut this in. Uh, when I was telling you I talked to people, I also talked to people in the line. And there were people who drove in from California to try this barbecue based on what they saw in that video from Mark Weens. Um, Wines Weens, however you pronounce his name. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's another part is that when you have people coming out of state to come try your stuff, you need to be on your game. So he's got some game to step up, but again, it's good. Getting ready to do this video, cut it together right now, edit it and put it in here. Y'all be blessed. Um, also letting you know, for those of you who are interested in the Zoom, I've sent you the information and the Zoom will be out today. Peace. All right, y'all, we at JL Smokehouse. That's how packed it is. Yeah, we did. Totally cool. The ratings on Yelp are good. Y'all see Miss Linda, Joe couldn't make it. It's okay. Kind of in the hood area, but yeah. That's how packed it is. We back here in the line waiting. All right, y'all. We at JL Smokehouse. Hey, Linda. Linda don't like being on camera. Just a quick thing. But here's I got um, pulled pork. Supposedly extra brisket. They was out of smoked sausage. I'm not a huge rib person. I wanted rib tips, but I got ribs. This is barbecue spaghetti. They didn't have the collard greens, so I got cabbage, mac and cheese, and then, oh, I'm gonna have to move my stuff on the table. This is potato salad. I'm gonna put mine in this chair. 
Let me put it in the chair. Oh, that's the cornbread. Oh, let me see your cornbread. It's like the pineapple. So, Linda, Linda, I caught a cornbread. I caught a cornbread. I got this. You get that. And then she got. I'm going to see what she got. She's trying to get cabbage. You got the mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Oh, you did the beans. I wanted to know that. Let me know how the beans are because I was going to get those and I decided on the spaghetti. Okay. And then she got a pan. She got, we got a look called now and later. So, for now, it's like the later. Okay, she did. I got rib, did tips, rib tips, ribs, pulled pork, sauce, uh, hot pepper. Okay, you didn't get any sausage either? No. Okay, I want to sample one of your rib tips. Okay. I did the hot tips because they ran out. That's pretty.